Frontier have just revealed their latest DLC with the four new species and a little surprise reveal in the trailer as well. Hello everybody and welcome back, Rexy's Gaming Bro at your service. Today we've got a few things to look at because we know the Megalodon was coming thanks to the little tease that we got not too long ago and also even better we've got a trailer to go over plus some notes from Frontier. Now the trailer showcases all four species, those being the Megalodon, as teased about 30 weeks ago, the Segisaurus, the Microceratus, which is the one that honestly I had a whole video for on how we were going to get him, not in this DLC but somewhere else. I'm going to have to switch that to the Smilodon, because the other species is Thanatos Draken. Which, first, I probably have started this video by showing you the trailer so you guys have gotten a look at that. But, we're gonna get into the details from Frontier itself, because the trailer is very short, it's like 19 seconds. And just showcases the dinosaurs. So let's get into it and start on their page. Hello park managers, discover a range of iconic species with the Jurassic World Evolution 2 Park Managers Collection Pack on May 16th. From legendary giants of the oceans and to the most diminutive of prehistoric creatures to walk the earth. These four new species will bring your parks to life and give your guests a reason to visit. As if the um, over 100 species we already have in the game weren't inviting our guests. But first thing we're going to talk about is the name of this DLC. We all were figuring, we were all on board that the idea that we were going to be getting a prehistoric um, Cenozoic pack. That is what we were expecting with the Megalodon as it fit the time era and it fit one of the missing species that Frontier was still going on because Frontier, as of the last year and a half, have been focusing their DLCs on specifically, mainly allowing them to smoothly add the missing species. The last DLC, the hybrid pack, allowed us to get Spinoceratops. The one before that allowed us to get the Tarvosaurus. The one before that, Nothosaurus. And it left, and so on. And it left us with two species, the Microceratus and the Mylodon. Now, there were two, three options going around on what this DLC could be, and we anchored them to the Megalodon itself because, well, it was the only creature we really knew about. And the third option was like a Titans pack where we got the big boys of like prehistoric times like Argentinosaurus, uh, Haxagopteryx, Shangtungosaurus or Argentinosaurus, you know, those big time dinos that were like highly requested, and of course Megalodon. But the other two packs ideas were basically to satisfy fans of the films to get those species. The Cenozoic pack of course would have given us Smilodon and well Megalodon, and the other was basically everyone's way of saying a fan pack because of news that was coming out and also our constant fear and phobia of this might be the last DLC, which it seems that fear is definitely the case for this one because the name Park Manager's Collection Pack basically should be translated to the Fans Pack because three of these species are definitely fan requested ones. One is not, which I'll explain in a little bit, but first let's get into it. Let's start off with the big boy himself, Megalodon, which we have two images to look at but we'll read his description first. The Megalodon is an apex predator that ruled the ocean over 13 million years. With a bite five times stronger than that of a T-Rex, this colossal hunter is the largest shark ever discovered and the true meaning of ferocity. Which, first off the bat, we get our first image showcasing it jumping for a shark, which um, I love seeing a bit of classic cannibalism in Jurassic. It never gets old, but we get a good scale on how big this guy is compared to the um, Great White, which comparing it to the Mosasaurus makes them definitely close in size. I think the Mosasaurus will be a little bit bigger, which, I mean, it's the Mosasaurus. Look how bloody big it is. Of course it's going to be bigger. It's bigger than the Shonisaurus, for God's sake. But the other image, if we uh, find it, uh, where is it? I had it here just a moment ago. Ah, there it is. It shows it underwater and in a different skin color, which 
First off the bat, I'm glad these skins are showing much more vibrant, which they have seemed to correct it with their creatures over the last DLCs over the past two years. The um, Chronosaurus being a good example, Shonisaurus, well, all the creatures from the Lagoon DLC. It was definitely a concern because, well, when the Lagoons were first introduced, pretty much all the creatures looked really bad with their Lagoon colors, especially, unfortunately, the Mosasaurus. But we also just get to see it over the, um, the viewing dome, which, nothing too crazy, but, you know, very, very nice. And if we... Uh, go back. That's it for um, Megalodon for now. I gotta say, definitely excited to see this big boy. Glad to see he's gonna eat the shark, because it would have been kind of concerning if he didn't. But let's move on to the one I'm most excited for, because it's one of my favorite dinosaurs of all time. We have the Microceratus. Hailing from the late Cretaceous period, the small, the small ceratopsid has a distinctive frill that moves with agility and speed to avoid predators. With a name meaning small horned, this fascinating little herbivore likes to live in larger groups of its own species. Which, I gotta say, we have um, only one image here, but of course you saw it in the trailer. It's got some really, really, really good skins, actually. And I, these ones are really good. And the frill is very vibrant. And this is definitely gonna be the most um, vivid looking ceratopsin, which, is kind of a good thing but also a bad thing at the same time because it's so small and like all the other small creatures you're not gonna see it when you're in a aerial view of your park you're only gonna see it when you're walking in when you're in their enclosure because as you can see from this image they're barely gonna peek over the grass from the looks of it which is fine but also since it uh looks like it's gonna be Working with the hadrosaur um, structure because it's walking on twos, but then like when it drinks, it lowers on all fours. Which I mean makes sense for the way it is. It's got a big, it's got a frill on its head, which probably adds some weight to the front. Which is, it's interesting. But also one thing we have to consider with this guy is we should be getting movie skins for him. You know, well, as we do with all the canon species, but. There is an interesting fact, because like Parasaurolophus in the Dominion Biosyn DLC, where we saw Para get three different variants, thanks to the fact that it had like apparently 12 versions that were used for Dominion. I know we only saw three of them technically, which were the three that were implemented for the game, but there were other renders that they didn't end up using in the movie, but they had completed, which is like, damn, Para, you boss. But Microceratus should also be getting a few. It will obviously be definitely getting its blue counterpart that we see with Charlotte Lockwood, and I think we see it as well with the Malta sequence, but I think that one's a different blue. It's a lot more smoother looking compared, but that might be because, you know, the footage edited into the movie is meant to be a little bit more dirtier looking, I guess. But we should also be getting a red one, as that was seen. That was the one that was picked up by one of the um, black market dealers, if I'm not mistaken. Which, I mean, good god, I want to kill that guy so bad because that Microceratus is all sad and makes me sad. But Microceratus, while being small, which is something that's like not the best thing for people, because I know a lot of people don't like the smaller creatures. I myself do like them, and this is one of my favorite species. I'm also very terrified to see how brutal of death animations he gets. He's actually the uh, slightly larger version of Homalocephale, so is he gonna have just as many brutal animations? We might have to dedicate a full video to that as well, because yeah, that's unfortunate. But let's move on to the third of the um, big three, well, I say big three, this guy in micro is small, this is the Sigisaurus. Scurrying through the sands of the early Jurassic period, Sigisaurus is a small theropod with long arms and powerful legs for its size. Less fearsome than its larger brethren, it relies on speed and cunning to hunt its prey. Which, first of all, I'm glad that it is another Jurassic era species, because we get a way too many Cretaceous ones lately, which I want to see more Jurassic ones. I also want to see more Triassic, but considering our fears, which we'll talk about later and in another video, 
probably not going to happen for this game. But Sigisaurus does have the issue of being small again, but also he does look pretty much like a um, Celiophysis, but compy size, as you can see from that grass, he is bloody tiny. And this is a really good picture of him, I love it. But I am excited for this guy, and Jurassic Park fans should be excited too, as this was one of the species that was listed as canon for Jurassic Park. I'm not sure if it was canon that they were already on the island, but they were planned to be one of the first species in the tour upon the park's originally scheduled opening. So, much like Proceratosaurus. Yeah, Proceratosaurus was the other one, so it's good to see him as well, and I gotta say, he does look pretty good. He's got a nice texture to him. It seems more rugged and older looking compared to some of the other smaller creatures. I don't know if that's the right word, but he's got like some nice wrinkly-ness, which I like. It's why I like Sinoceratops, because it gives them that like aged look, like they're, you know, smaller or something, or not the big guys, but they got like their age with them. They got the wisdom. And here's the species that I think a lot of people are confused about having because when it came to flyers, the number one for many people was probably Haxagopteryx because, well, it's another big pterosaur, but instead we get the Thanatos Draken, which this aptly named Dragon of Death ruled over the prehistoric skies of South America during the late Cretaceous period. With an enormous wingspan of approximately 30 feet, this giant pterosaur was an aerial force to be reckoned with, which we can already see that it's not actually going to be as big as the Quetzalcoatlus. Obviously, that thing is titanic. But it does raise a question on why it's here, considering the fact that this is basically a fan pack, which falls into the category of frontier usually doing with their dlcs most of the cases their dlcs will have three of the species be highly well known like the ultimate popular species that were like begged for and then the other would be somewhat known or wouldn't be well known compared to the other three that would be basically their way of expanding people's knowledge for example if we look at examples like the uh what's a good example the marine pack, for example. The big three for that one for me would probably be Nothosaurus because Jurassic canon, everyone's gonna know it from the canon, so that's its point. Dunkleosseus, it's Dunkleosseus. It's one of the first fish creatures that come to mind when thinking prehistoric. The Archelon, the biggest turtle in history, it's gonna be known. And then the Shonisaurus. The Shonisaurus was the one that was more known by some people, but not as much as the other three. And I think that's what they're doing with Thanatos Draken. I think it makes sense because, you know, if they were to add a Haxagopteryx, it'd be like, you know, it's all fan service, but it's a nice way to introduce a newer species. And I gotta say, it looks really good. I love the way it's shaped. It looks very, um, like, beautiful actually and it's got a fur coat if you didn't notice when you look at it in the trailer for its back which I absolutely love which we also see it um picking up a goat so we also know that it will have good animations as well which is very nice and we have a bit of more news to cover quickly so let's get into that Little Edie T-Rex skin. Customize your T-Rex with a new variant based on Little Edie the T-Rex from season 4 and 5 of Jurassic World Can Cretaceous from Netflix, which this one I kind of am confused about. Like, I understand why they're adding it because it's a canon skin that's like missing, but at the same time, there's a few other skins I would have preferred them add. Like, for one, the Pterosaur, well, the Pteranodon from The Lost World, um, and also working on some of their skins for some of their canon species already. I was gonna. I was going to do a video about it, I'm not sure if I'll do it now, but I was thinking they could have updated the Fur Rex and the Triceratops because those two, like their versions, only have the one, and I'd love to see other versions of that. But I think Little Edie Skin is a nice addition for Camp Cretaceous fans. I myself am probably not going to use it as much, mainly because I think the reason it didn't get included in Camp Cretaceous's DLC was mainly the fact that it 
wasn't really needed because of the fact that it's very close to the buck and bull wrecks from JP3 and the Lost World, which I know th the fact that she's green to begin with was a little bit upsetting to some fans, myself included, but Little Edie is a nice addition. We won't get into it too much. We'll see her when the DLC comes out and the free update content, which there's two things here and unfortunately that's it. But the first one is something that has been staring us in the face every time you've opened Jurassic World Evolution 2. When the Mosasaurus would just come cruising straight by saying, Hey, guess what? I'm here. And what was around it? Oh, that lovely plant called kelp. And we didn't have it in the game. For two and a half years, we begged for it as it stared us in the face mockingly. It's finally here. Kelp plants add some extra foliage to your gloom, to your lagoons, I can't speak, with three new kelp plant decorations. Now it is labeled as decoration, so it's not like we're going to be getting a brush of kelp like we do with the trees and such for each map, which I, I think is alright, but I would have liked it to be um, a brush as well. Maybe they'll surprise us with more information, much like they did with the Spinosaurus as a little sneaky tease but also we have one that i didn't think was going to happen but many people including myself wanted and that is the land-based lagoon light a version of the lagoon light is coming with the free update that can be built on land to illuminate your parks and this is really awesome to me because the lagoon lights are really really strong because they kind of have to be with all the murkiness but when it comes to the lights in on land, they sort of have like a huge entrapment. They don't really spread their light too far, which is understandable in some ways, but in some ways is very limiting with um, photos and such if you want to use the lighting. But with this light being added, I actually uh, tried to do this. Like I tried to get a picture so I could use for a banner for my channel a few months ago and like I couldn't get close enough to zoom in to make it worthwhile but it looked so good I probably will if I have the picture still or screenshot I'll share it with you guys but I absolutely adore this little detail it'll be so awesome it'll really be awesome for um, pointing at buildings or enclosures and such and honestly, this looks really fun. I'm glad we are getting some content for the free update, but unfortunately, that is it. We're only getting the um, plant, the kelp, and a light, which... And the little Edie is not part of the um, update. That's part of the DLC, which... At least the way it is on this website. So, I gotta say, I am a little mixed. But I think it's because of the fact that now that we know Jurassic World Evolution 3 or a game or Jurassic, it's going to have Jurassic World something is coming to Frontier within next year or the year after. It does, um, I do understand why they're not putting as much into this, but it does feel like this is going to be the final DLC. <laughs> But still, guys, I do, I do have great excitement for this DLC. I hope I'm not saying that I don't. I hope it's not sounding like I don't. I definitely do. This DLC looks like it's going to be loads of fun. There's definitely high potential for animations, especially with that Microceratus. So oh boy, he's going to get massacred. But guys, thank you so much for watching this. Maybe liking, subscribing. Stay safe out there, and remember that you are all amazing out there. Never forget that. Until next time, guys, enjoy yourself.